On episode 188 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we discuss, is coffee good for you? You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 188. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Before we get started with the program, I wanted to take just a minute to remind you that I've launched Surefire Results for Weight Loss. This 28-day program will help you lose the weight that you're looking to lose over the course of the next 28 days. There's no better time to start than today. So please go to 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash surefire and join us at Surefire Results for Weight Loss today. When I kind of got the mindset that I wanted to look into coffee, I really expected that I was going to find that story, that one thing in there in the research that was going to tell me how bad coffee was or how good coffee was. And the interesting thing was I really didn't find any of that. Now, don't get me wrong, I did find some pros and cons of coffee, and I do want to share those with you today because I do think it's important to be informed about the things that you put in your body. But I guess the the short answer of this, to skip to the end, is to say that it really is a personal choice over what the pros and cons mean to you and what they're doing for you or against you because there really isn't a definitive this is good or this is bad. And actually, as I got to getting into this, and I've been doing some other reading, I've got an author I'm going to be interviewing later this week. And I was really thinking, you know, I have a lot of different opinions about things. And some of those opinions are science-based. Most of them are now. But there's not always a yes or no answer to these things. A lot of times, it really just comes down to what matters for you and your personal longevity and your lifestyle. And so I want to go over these, and I'm going to go over the pros first, and then I'm going to go into the cons. And I don't want you to think that I've put them in any order on the basis of of my preferences. I would I love coffee, and you can see if you go to the show notes at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 188, you're going to see a copy of my branded coffee cup that I enjoy coffee every morning. I love coffee. So, you know, I, I didn't want to write this as a fluff piece of, of why coffee is great for you. And I don't want to write it as a coffee is terrible for you because that's that's not what I found as I was doing my research. But I am going to go through these and try to keep kind of a level playing field on this. But I did want to have that preface out there so you do understand I am a coffee drinker. I enjoy coffee. Haven't always been a coffee drinker. I used to be a Diet Coke drinker. I understand the health implications of Diet Coke. This would be a very different episode if I were reporting on that, but I will report on coffee, uh, what I found and what I think. So let's talk about the pros. I think the first thing, and and this comes as no surprise, is that coffee does help make you a little bit more alert. It wakes you up. And studies have shown that it can help with memory, particularly when you're trying to use memory outside of your normal uh, wake time schedule. So they, they did studies on college students and found that, of course, college students don't like to be up at 8 o'clock in the morning taking tests and studying, but they found that coffee did help enhance their memory after they had taken it early in the morning. Again, being at a time when they would typically not be awake, it did improve their memory. So coffee will help improve general alertness and memory, which I don't think any of us would deny if you've tried coffee. One of the interesting things that I noted as I was kind of going through my research is there's so many studies. I mean, an unbelievable number of studies on coffee was that they were finding some protective measures around certain cancers. And so if you're suffering from a cancer or recovering from a cancer, I do think it's worth you kind of really looking into that research. And and the way I do the research is go to PubMed and type in the words you want read studies, understand how they put the studies together, because the abstracts don't always give you all the details. But it was very interesting, the total number of studies that I found out there, where they had correlated positively the consumption of coffee and not getting cancers or and or recovering from cancers uh, more quickly. 
So there may be some protective measures. And we've known for a while, and it's been pretty public, I think, that there there are some anti-cancer uh, properties, you know, the the basic properties of, of most plant-based foods that you're going to get. And so I think that's really what it kind of comes down to is just recognizing that coffee could have beneficial effects for you. But the studies really, you know, there is some correlation, but I wouldn't say it's definitive at this point. But I did see a lot of it. I was really kind of surprised to see that much uh, on coffee and being beneficial for cancer. The next is metabolism. Caffeine does somewhat stimulate your metabolism. Now, you know, I'm not a big fan of the calories in, calories out model. So it's not that I'm going to encourage you to say we should be drinking coffee as a weight loss thing, but just recognize that is something that is happening. And if you're looking at weight loss as an opportunity for you, something you want to try to do, taking a little bit of coffee here and there is not something that's going to hurt you for weight loss. In fact, it might help a little bit. So that's just another pro to kind of take in. And the final, and I've, you know, final one I'll mention on the pro side, and I admitted this readily, I I do like the taste of coffee. It took me a little while to acquire that taste, but it it does. It's delicious. (laughs) So I I do like the taste of coffee. I've acquired that taste and uh, I do enjoy a nice cup of coffee in the morning. Maybe more than a cup of coffee, Uh, more than, maybe more than a cup. Okay. But I do enjoy my coffee. I do do enjoy kind of using it as my way of waking up in the morning. And so again, that that kind of rounds out the pros. And then now as a coffee drinker, I'll kind of dive into the cons. And and I think some of these are are pretty important for people to consider. Okay, the first is it does elicit a cortisol effect. And so the corollary of when we talked about the metabolism side is that there is a, a kind of boost in the cortisol levels. Now, that wouldn't always be a problem, but recognize that cortisol is one of those kind of things that does cause a little bit of storage of fat, particularly in areas we don't want to store fat because it's a stress hormone. But I guess one of the things I read recently that was really, really interesting about coffee and cortisol, caffeine and cortisol, is that when we first wake up in the morning, it's not always just kind of this calm ease into the day. In fact, based on our normal hormone levels, our cortisol level is highest right as we're waking up. That's actually the hormone that's helping us wake up. Melatonin helps us fall asleep. Cortisol helps us wake up. So that stress hormone is already pretty high when we first wake up in the morning, and then it starts to kind of settle down. So, you know, if you're worried about your cortisol levels, you may want to wait maybe half an hour, 45 minutes after you wake up to have your first cup of coffee. So that's just one thing to consider is that it will, there will be a cortisol effect. And if you want to manage that, You just should be aware that you may want to wait an hour or so, you know, 45 minutes, half an hour after you wake up to begin consuming coffee. The next side of that, though, is coffee does disrupt your sleep if if you're taking it too close to bedtime. And it's kind of always this weird thing. You know, you go, I go to these business dinners. Unfortunately, I have to go to quite a few of them. And they'll always ask you at the end of the dinner, you, you've had all this you know, food, maybe some wine, and then they're going to say, would you like a coffee? And it's so strange to me that 10 o'clock at night, people are drinking coffee, but they can. And then most of the time there's a conversation, how do you drink coffee so late at night and, and not go to sleep? And most people that do that, they'll say, well, it doesn't seem to disrupt my sleep at all. And I will say that People metabolize caffeine at different rates, but no one metabolizes it over the course of two hours. So it is somewhat disrupting their sleep. They may not recognize it. They may be falling asleep, but I don't know that they're getting the quality of sleep that they could be getting if they weren't drinking it. So I would caution and kind of, you know, test this on yourself of saying, if you stop drinking coffee at noon, how well do you sleep? If you stop drinking coffee at 10 a.m., how well do you sleep? And I think you'll probably start finding that there's a a, a good line there for you where you've metabolized most of that caffeine out of your system and you're able to get a good night's sleep. So just find that line. Find where that line is. Most of the time, I won't drink coffee after 2 p.m. And it's very rare that I do. Uh, It's only if I know that I need to be up or I know like I'm driving and need to be extra alert. I won't drink it after 2 p.m. That's my line that I've found where I feel like I'm getting the best sleep and able to go to sleep when I want to go to sleep. So just kind of find that line where it's not disrupting your sleep because sleep is so, so important for health and wellness.
Okay. The next one, pretty obvious, it stains your teeth. You know, when you go into the dentist and they're asking, well, you know, what are you doing? That's coffee stains for me. And so just recognizing that you, you can get uh, the stains on your teeth if you're not, you know, brushing your teeth regularly. So if you're a coffee drinker, going to be a regular coffee drinker, it's just something for you to consider. Uh, you may end up brushing your teeth a little bit more often just to kind of counterbalance the fact that you, you are putting this uh, acidic brown liquid on your teeth in the morning, each morning. And so, again, just kind of watching that, realizing that your teeth might not be as bright and shiny white as they were in the past if you're a regular coffee drinker. The next thing is, and this is not about the coffee, because there, maybe there's nothing inherently wrong with the coffee, but a lot of people won't take their coffee unless they're putting something in it. And, and you know what I'm talking about. It's the sugar, it's the creamer, in many cases, fake creamers. There's just these toxic things that can sit on the tabletop for years, I guess. And then in many cases, these flavored things that, yeah, the base is, the base flavor is coffee, uh, but there's so much other stuff in it that it's really hard to even say that it's coffee anymore. When there's more than five words to describe what you're drinking, it's not coffee anymore. <laughs> there might be some coffee in it, but there's a recipe you're making a dessert or something else, and it's not really a coffee. So recognize that, you know, if you're drinking the, the mocha latte, whatever they are, that's not coffee. And if you're adding a lot of creamers and, and other stuff to it, that's not coffee. And a cream does not sit on a countertop and not waste away and not spoil. So those little packets of stuff that they've got there, the powdered stuff that you're pouring into your coffee, that's not healthy. That's just not good stuff for you. So avoiding that stuff, avoiding the sugar, obviously, you know, I'm not a big fan of sugar at all. So avoiding those things. And I recognize that for a lot of people, that really kind of makes coffee undrinkable for them. You can adjust your taste buds over time. I've, I've in fact done it. I've moved from the Diet Cokes to the coffee. It, it was a transition. I worked on that. It's something you can work on, but just recognize that the stuff you put in your coffee needs to be as healthy as it can be for you. Because again, it's, it's going in your body. So that's just a, you know kind of one of those negatives. It's not a negative or con on the coffee. It's just the fact that the coffee kind of invites people to do these other things. And then the final thing I'll put out there is that not all coffee is created equally. The beans are typically sourced from different places around the world. And unfortunately, the way that they're harvested and stored and managed allows them to, in many cases, ferment and spoil. Molds can grow on them and other things if they're not handled properly. So you know, making sure that you're getting a good quality bean is, is kind of important. There are people that are more sensitive to this than others. There's a, another podcaster. His name is Dave Asbury. And I swear, this guy gets within eight miles of mold. He's probably just going to kick over. At least if you hear him tell the story, he wants to avoid microtoxins and molds and everything at, at every level of his life. He feels that that's the, you know, the poison, his kryptonite, something that's going to kill him at any given moment. And he had some bad health history that he was able to define based on mold, based on those types of things. So he is, he feels he's ultra sensitive to this stuff. And I'm not going to say folks are or aren't, but just recognize that the beans that you're drinking could be spoiled, not so much that the bean is spoiled, but that it's been allowed to mildew or mold. And so making sure that you're buying your, your coffee from a good quality source is very, very important. And, you know, it's not necessarily the, the value that you pay for the bean that's going to do that, but recognizing the source of the bean and the company that you're, you're buying from, finding those good reputable companies so that you're buying good quality stuff, I do think is important. Because again, as we kind of, as I kind of wrap this all up, anything you put in your body is a personal decision. It just is. You are making a decision about your life, about your future. And making that decision is one of those things where you say, okay, if every time you sat down and you thought about it, would you do it? So taking just maybe a 10 second break, just a second and think about it. And I kind of quit this. If you walked up and found a needle on the ground and there was a substance in it, would you shoot it into your veins? And I almost believe 100% of the listeners of this podcast would say no. 100% of the people I talk to on the street would probably say no, but we're willing to put it in our mouth, stuff that we don't know what it is. We don't know how it's made. We don't know where it's come from. And really, 
that's in your body. That, that's becoming a part of you, just as if you were injecting it in your veins. It is becoming a part of you. So really do take the time to think about it. There are some pros and cons to coffee. After doing all this research, am I going to change my coffee consumption patterns? And the short answer is no. I buy high quality coffee because I like the way it tastes. I drink what I need to uh, feel like I, I enjoy my day. I stop early enough so it's not disrupting my sleep. And you know, I do recognize there's the cortisol effect and the metabolism effect. And I'm watching that and I understand that. So, you know, making sure that you know what you're putting in your body, whether you want to do something or not, just make that a conscious decision, everything that you do. So coffee, the verdict is in, it's not good for you and it's not bad for you. It, it, is, it is what it is. And you have to make the personal decision of whether you're going to have coffee in the morning or not. If you enjoyed today's episode, would you please share it with friends and family? Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, we meet with Kathleen Trotter and discuss her book, Finding Your Fit, a compassionate trainer's guide to making fitness a lifelong habit. Until then, have a happy and healthy day.